All right, all right. Weekend's over. Time to get back to work. After all, it is about that time of day again, isn't it? Monday evening, March the 9th, 2020. My name is Joseph. As always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're here for the first time, it's great to have you with me because my job tonight is find the best levels of support and resistance, the best entry setups and exit targets. And most importantly, my job tonight is to help keep us out of trouble by identifying the easy traps to avoid and capitalize on for tomorrow. That's Tuesday's trading session. And I get a jam-packed video in store for you tonight. Of course, the charts are already in the background. Got some oil, some S&P, and some gold. Got a lot to talk about tonight in case you've been living under a rock, lots of volatility, big gaps everywhere, limit down for crying out loud in most of these markets. We have a lot to talk about, obviously, in tonight's video. I also want to make sure we check the calendar because obviously second week of the month, the second week of the month is a very interesting week. It's not as busy as the first and the third week of the month, but I want to make sure you know the schedule for this week so you know what to be avoiding and when to be looking for the best setups. So as you can see, we got a lot to cover here tonight. Charts are ready. Schedule is ready. Glad to see you're with me here. I'm ready to rock and roll. Before we jump into the video, though, as always, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's newsletter, so make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you always get notified every time I publish something new. If you have any questions, drop those questions in the comment section below. And as always, guys and gals, if you tune in every evening to watch this video newsletter, I put my heart and soul into this video video every evening for you guys and gals. If you love the video, hit that thumbs up button for me. Always appreciate you guys showing your love on this YouTube channel. So again, don't forget, subscribe, subscribe, hit that bell icon, drop those questions in, hit that thumbs up button if you love the content here for tonight. But let's not waste any more valuable time, huh? It's Monday afternoon. Let's get ready for tomorrow. I'm going to start off first, of course, though, with that economic news calendar for tomorrow morning. As I said earlier, it's the second week of the month and Normally, this second week is kind of a sleeper. You know, first week of the month is always that non-farm payroll. And it's always, you know, the first week of the month. The third week of the month is always a pretty busy, you know, busy week of the month. You get options expiration. A lot of big moves happen right in that third week. The second week is kind of like the, you know, the, the, the kind of the forgotten week here this week, or not not this week, but usually it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a slower week uh, as far as news goes. But I do want to make sure I point out some important things for us to keep in mind here. Tomorrow, you'll notice tomorrow there's not a single thing on the calendar here for tomorrow. So tomorrow, Tuesday. March 10th. There really isn't any major news on the schedule tomorrow. Tomorrow we do have an election. I believe, uh, I can't recall exactly all the states, but I know I saw Michigan on there. There's the Democratic primaries uh, being held tomorrow. I don't anticipate that's going to have too big of an impact. Uh, you know, after Super Tuesday, last Tuesday, I don't expect this to have too big of an impact. So, you know, that's kind of like a known unknown. It might be a little bit of a lower volume session because of it, but I, I don't think so. I, I'll bet I'll bet this volatility that we saw today will absorb any any anyone who misses the markets tomorrow because they're waiting in line to cast their vote. So there is an election tomorrow, but, uh, you know, and again, it's only the Democratic primary. It's only a couple states. So I don't anticipate that being too big of a market moving event. I think really tomorrow the biggest the biggest thing coming down the pipeline here is really how will, you know, unless you missed the news headlines today, there is a price war going on uh, between OPEC and Russia right now. If you if you tuned in last week, We've been kind of following this drama that's been unfolding between the OPEC nations and Russia, right? OPEC, for, and again, I'm I'm a, I'm just like you, right? I'm a bystander. I'm 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 going off of what we're being told, so I don't have any firsthand knowledge of this. But from my perspective, it sounds like OPEC was ready to cut production at their two-day meeting last week. The Russians were reluctant to do that, and it sounds like over the weekend that escalated into kind of a tit for tat. You know, we saw trade war war between the U.S. and China earlier this year or late last year, it almost feels that like we have a bit of an oil war going on right now. So the Saudis, of course, right, again, apparently, right, flood the market with extra oil, trying to trying to uh, push out any small uh, producers like Russia. Russia may be a big country, but 
historically it is a it is a relatively small producer of oil and that is what caused the 25 percent move down today 25 percent i i've been trading oil for 15 years uh I, almost 15 years to say and i've never seen such a thing before so we definitely can tell there is some substance to that that is a known unknown coming for tomorrow that's something we're definitely going to be watching closely tomorrow in our trade room and then obviously i'm sure everyone is being affected by this right now at least in some way is this coronavirus right the c19 or the or the coronavirus whatever you want to call it uh you know we continue to you know we we we, we unfortunately are kind of just going into the bell curve here in the u.s right so we saw a couple of weeks ago we saw how china right we start hearing about it all of a sudden the panic happens right and it kind of heats you know kind of hits peak panic right and then of course a week go by all of a sudden the cases start to get fewer and the news media moves on to something else to make us scared about right that's that's kind of how the bell curve works in these you know crisis and obviously this one's more than this is not a made up crisis um, I don't personally think it's as bad as they're making it seem out there um, judging on the way that gold has responded the last few days I think is a big indicator that this is not so much a mimic of the 2008 crash it's more of just a frothy 12 year bull run and people are taking a little bit of cream right off the top right now that's what it feels like uh, from a trader's perspective and again I think gold uh, is the is the biggest uh, uh, kind of clue on that. You are more than welcome to disagree with me on that. In fact, I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments section below. Uh, but judging on how market reacts to gold and judging on how kind of we, we just saw this happen in Asia. I mean, we've been watching the coronavirus since late last year, right? So we saw the, you know, kind of the crisis bell curve of the peak, you know, chaotic, you know, chaos. And then of course now it's like, you know, China's got, you know, apparently China's got all under control, right? Everything is fine now. So we're probably maybe right about there, maybe, right? On the, on, on, on kind of the peak, you know, peak insanity of this, of this virus issue, right? We're hearing about exponential numbers of cases, right? Even though they're not that many, globally speaking, right? Overall. So I would imagine, you know, we might see a little bit of that peak here, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, before we go into that, right? Into that uh, uh, pre quad which weekend here so you know again I don't want to diminish the real threat of this you know make sure you're aware listen to your you know local public officials I would not get your health news from from Fox or CNN right they obviously are not going to know your local area so listen to your local right your local uh, authorities and be smart about it, but I don't think it's going to be as bad as right they want us to believe, especially since we just saw what happened in China. So long story short, that is something we are watching here for tomorrow. Big gap down, big limit down it, uh, in, in the equity markets. It's difficult to tell how much of that was based on fear of the virus, how much of that was because of the OPEC uh, oil war. You know what I mean? That was kind of the hard part, I think, about uh, about that big drop here for today. You know, so we know tomorrow recap here there's not there's no major news right we're watching for more headlines on the OPEC uh, oil war right we're watching for more headlines on the on the virus right as that continues but I'll tell you the same thing I, I tell my clients every day I don't care what the world is doing out there our job is very simple we come in every morning and we find our setups if the market is bullish, bearish, fast, slow, highly volatile, not very volatile, if it's limit down, limit up, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't really change right, how we trade. All we do is we come in every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, and we trade our setups. And what I would encourage you to do is, is learn more about those setups. I got a free trading course. I've got my membership course. I'll put all the links, right, to join our trade room tomorrow morning so you can do this right along with us at 8 o'clock Eastern time. I'll put all the links I'm talking about tonight down in the description of this video. So tomorrow morning, I don't care if we go limit down again, uh, you know, in, in, in the overnight. I don't care if oil goes to $5 a barrel. It will not change a single thing. The only thing it changes is the price, right, of the entries and exits. That's it. We still continue to look for our reliable setups, and you can learn more about those setups in the description of this YouTube video. So that's the goal tomorrow, right? Get to the desk early. We'll be in our trade room 8 o'clock Eastern time, and we'll get 
prepped accordingly and we'll wait for our setups. We'll keep our eyes open for OPEC. We'll keep our eyes open for the virus updates. We'll trade what we see tomorrow. That's the only thing that we can do. All right, let's keep moving. I don't want to take up too much of your valuable time, especially not on the calendar here for this week. So tomorrow is definitely more of, right, more of kind of waiting and seeing what we get here out of these headlines. Let's jump into some oil, some S&P, and some gold. I'm going to start first here with the black gold here for tomorrow, right, the Texas tea. Now, I'll tell you, uh, the, the crude oil, I almost said gold here, crude oil futures right now, the CL, this uh, kind of a confusing chart, right? The obviously gap down, right? Big, 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 big gap down, right, from 41. I can't think of the last time I saw that big of a gap down. I mean, look at that number right now on the analyzer, right? Eight for the daily range and 26 and three quarter percent down. Jeez, that's a big move down. But you know what? I mean, this is the way the world works, right? It is what it is. The the percentage of that move, I'm not a long-term trader. I'm not holding oil, right? I, I could care less about about the direction, uh, how, what the price is. So, you know, I find myself sometimes getting caught up in, oh my God, it's going down. So Why do I care? I'm a short-term trader. Right now, again, if you're checking your 401k balance every right every two hours, right, then you probably want, you probably don't want to be doing that right now, right? So that's not a good idea. But if you're a short-term trader, don't get wrapped up in the oh my goodness, it's all it's all the way down. Who cares? It doesn't affect your life at all. It does not affect our trading strategy whatsoever. So be aware of that kind of mental trap that you can easily fall into in these types of markets. It's easy to let those news headlines make you think that this is horrible. It's not horrible. It's the way the markets work, right? Supply and demand. There hasn't been a lot of demand for crude oil for many, many years. And this, the, the way that price drops like this is a very good example of what happens when markets are overvalued, right? And all of a sudden, Mother Nature comes in and things correct. It's the way things go. But don't let the price, right, that's tied to it, don't let that, don't let that change the way that you're going to be trading your strategy. That's the first thing I kind of see here on the oil, right? 25% down whatever will we do we're going to trade the same way we always do nothing really nothing changes now what does change as we mentioned last week in these highly volatile markets what do we change in highly volatile markets there are four things we do we talked about this last week right we use a slower time frame right that way we can get more information condensed what do we do we widen our stops and our targets and we minimize our position size, right? We cut down our position size. That's what we do, right? We don't really change anything else. We use a little bit slower time frame. That way we can get rid of a lot of the noise because with those higher volatility comes a lot of noisy candlesticks, right? A lot of choppy back and forth. We slow the time frame down. We widen out our stops and targets right and we cut our position sizes down because what's going to happen is when you use a slower time frame the signals you get are going to be wider. Those wider signals are great, but they're going to require bigger stops, right? And those bigger stops require more risk, right? You can absorb that risk by minimizing your position. So if you're on four contracts, go to two contracts. Your two contracts, go to one contract. If you're a one contract trader, unfortunately, during these excessively volatile, you know, and they're short term, they're not going to be like this forever, right? By the end of next week, we'll probably like, I, I can't even recall that last time it happened like this, right? This will come and go relatively quickly, right? But in the meantime, though, if you're in a one contract position, you can't cut your position size in half. Um, a lot of people la have asked me, what about the micro contracts. I'm not a big fan of the micro contracts because the commissions are so incredibly high as compared to the tick value. So my, my best advice is to all my clients out there, if you're on one contract, this is a time when you've got to kind of sit on hands. And remember, your goal with one contract is to get to two contracts just so that you can have the flexibility in these situations, right? I always tell my clients, there's a big difference between one contract and two contracts. With two contracts, you can leave a runner. With only one contract, you can't. With two contracts, you can cut your position size down to be able to absorb this extra volatility. So those are some changes we're making right now across all of these markets. Now, what do we know about oil? We know we had that big gap down, 
right? A lot of volatility. Slams up, chops around, runs back down. Now, I think the most important clue on this happens right here on the oil. I think this is the most important clue on the entire chart, right? Not the big gap down, not the price of thirty of thirty dollars, definitely not the twenty seven percent right uh, move lower here. This is the big clue on this chart. Here's why: anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we know that we should see a two legged pullback and a retest of the high. And we talk about this all the time in this newsletter, right? This is not, this is hopefully not the first time you've heard me say this. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we expect to see a two legged pullback and a retest of the extreme. So if it's a bull market, right, it's a retest of the high. If it's a bear market, it's a retest of that, of that low. Makes sense? Now, the reason why I say the most important information is here is because look what happens after we retest the high. This is what we call rejection. As you can see, the buyers got rejected as they tried to go higher. Now, usually, and this, again, there's always an exception to every rule, but usually when a market makes a run like this and makes a run higher, we get that one, we get that two, right? We get that retest of the high. Again, that's kind of the classic bull market, right? We look for that nice deep pullback underneath the moving average, buy that dip with a target back to retest the high. Now, at this point, the buyers have to keep going. If the buyers can't keep going through that high, if they run into some resistance up there now and come back down right into that range here, it becomes a range. And this is the most important clue, I think, on this chart. We're gonna take, what I'll do now is I'll look for an area, like usually it's a little hidden clue like this, and this will now become the range like that. Now this becomes a very different scenario. Now this is a bull market into a range. Okay, we got rejection of the highs. What's going to happen when the buyers get rejected? Okay, they're not going to turn sellers. They're going to say, okay, apparently this is too high up here to want to be a buyer. They're going to start looking to buy down here, right? They're going to want to buy at a lower price. And that's where you want to start looking, right, for those buys. So think about that for a second now as you go into this, right? We see a strong move up. We see that two-legged pullback and that retest of the high. They go up, they struggle, they collapse back down in. Now, this is your range, right? That is your range. And this range might be a little bit wider, you know, give or take here. It might be a bit wider like that. I think I've got the range pretty well nailed down because of the previous price action that we saw earlier in the morning. But this is going to be your range. And so now we have a bull market, right, into a trading range. We see the buyers fail off the high. And now what I'm looking for is, and you can kind of eyeball this, but the amount of the move above and the amount of the move below, we are right there, right? We're right there. So now I know this area, it looks very bearish, doesn't it? It really does. But this is a great example where you've got to listen to the story being told on this chart. You know, one of the things when my first trading coaches told me almost 15 years ago is he said, every single chart tells a story. You have to listen to that story, right? You have to listen to it. So as it goes higher here, it's running higher, right? The bulls want to buy low. They buy low. They retest the high. What happens? They get rejected. Okay, listen. What is the market telling you right there? It's telling you they don't, they don't see value in higher prices. It has nothing to do with the gap. It has nothing to do with the reality. It's just, it's price levels. Okay, so buyers get rejected, right? Now, at this point, now they're going to go, okay, how about down here, right? This is where we're going to start buying now. And this is where we'll start looking for that long side now going back up into that range. So that's the biggest clue in this chart. The biggest clue that I see is this range, and we are underneath the low of that range. Now, anytime I see a range, I'm always looking for additional levels of support and resistance because a range bond market tells me to buy at support, buy low, right, and sell at resistance, sell high. So I've got my sell zones above, I've got my buy zones below, and you'll notice I've got my little expanding triangles. Expanding triangles are really, really reliable when it comes to ranges, and you can see we're right on that expanding triangle right now. So as you can see, right, we are, we are range bound here. And again, it may not be easy to see at first, but I think if you listen to the story and you kind of walk your way through this and you know what markets tend to do, we clearly got rejection and we're hoping now we'll see these bears fail and run back up into that range. That brings me to the next thing that we know about this chart, and that is a strong move down. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, what do we usually see? 
a pullback and a retest of that low, right? This is exactly how we're going to structure our entries now. Now we know what happened earlier, so we know where to look for a buy. But we can't just buy it. You know, that's not the way the markets work. There's too much momentum going lower. So if you get into a support level here, you can't just buy it because look what happens. It runs you over, right? You can't just buy at support. I mean, I used to when I was a rookie, right? Remember, remember we were all rookies and we thought we could just buy support levels on pullbacks. It was going to be that easy. It's not really that easy. You can have the best level of support known to man, right? You can have 10, 15 levels of support right there. But this freight train comes running into it. Do you really? I mean, yeah, every once in a while they will, right? They'll stop and turn around. But usually the strong moves, the deep pullbacks you want, they're going to usually bounce you out and then go right back up without you. So I don't want to just buy at that area. I want to anticipate. If I was a seller right here, what would I be trying to do? I'll tell you what I'd be doing right now. If I was a seller on this market, I'd be looking for a short off the high of this channel, right? That's what I'd be looking for. I'd be looking for a short off the high, right? A little trap high up here. I'd be looking to get short somewhere up around these highs here. That's exactly where I'm trying to be a buyer here for tomorrow. Now, remember, it's a very strong bear move down here, but we're underneath the low of this range. Anticipate now, if I was a seller, where would I try to sell? I'd be selling at resistance. I'd be selling that swing high. I'd be selling that what I call battle zone. This is where we assume that sellers are going to likely try, right? Bears will likely try here right now to get in to this move. You can also probably notice here that strong move down, that lower low, this is setting up for one of my favorite patterns you might have noticed, right? A two try trap pattern. If you watch my newsletter, this is very, very common pattern here. Now, this pattern, not a great location to be a seller, but I could obviously anticipate now as we go higher, bears try once, bears try twice. Right? I would say with this momentum going lower, I'm looking for sellers to fail off that, right, off that pullback. That tells me now where their stops are, and I'm looking to be a buyer right into those stops and maybe get lucky for a pullback on the way back up to retest those highs. So knowing, right, kind of knowing how the market set up earlier this morning, right? Knowing how the market set up earlier this morning, knowing where we want to be a buyer here now, but also knowing that the bears have a lot of this momentum tells me, I think a great ent entry here is going to be watching for these bears to come in, let them get short off this high. That tells you exactly where their stops are, right? And you can buy right into those stops going back up into that trading range. That's a great strategy. I'm hoping we get something like that here early in tomorrow morning's trading session. But I know a bunch of you right now are shaking your head right now going, is this guy crazy? Is he seriously telling me right now he wants to buy this market? I want to buy on the back of seller's stop losses, right? I'm not just going to be crazy and buy this market. But what if you disagree with me on this? What if you think there's no way, man? Remember, anytime we see a strong move down, we should retest that low, right? Well, unfortunately, they broke through that high here, so that blew that out of the water. But I know what you're talking about, right? I realize that low is a very juicy carrot at the end of the stick, right, for these bears. But the problem is, again, look where we are right now. We're at the low of a triangle. We're at the low of that range. It's easy to see how this market could easily pull back and snap right back up into that trading range. How could I sell this market as it's going lower? The first thing I would have to do is I'd have to blow out that range. I have to make sure that range breaks down. They're going to break out of that range. And to do that, I need some sort of breakout pattern. That's the thing. I need to get a breakout. Now, my favorite way to trade a range is to buy low, sell high, and focus on failures. But every once in a while, we get a successful breakout. And a breakout looks like, to the upside, a one, two, three breakout, right? It's a strong move up, a pullback to the moving average, and it holds and breaks out. That's a one, two, three breakout. Or if it goes lower, right, it's a strong move down, it's a pullback to the moving average, and a breakout through, right? We call that a one, two, three breakout. Now, at the same time, if those if those bears fail, I will look to buy going back up into that trading range using that seller failure pattern I just mentioned, right, to be a buyer off of that low. So as you can see here on crude oil right now, as we go lower, we've got everything we need here right now for that breakout.
right? All they have to do is hold this pullback. If they can hold this pullback and keep this baby running lower, now what I can do is I can get a new channel going on here, right? Find that new channel top and I can sell the high, right, of that new channel. Does that make sense, right? What I can also do is, this of course would be called a one, two, three breakout into hidden channel pullback, right? So again, strong move down, that's step one, pull back to the moving average, step three, step two, if they can get three, this strong move through now, now I can mark up the low, I can mark up the high of that hidden channel, and I can sell the high of that new hidden channel. My target, of course, will be kind of that 27 and a quarter down there. Now, what if they don't pull back? Right, you know, sometimes the market just keeps going. If the market keeps going to pull back, look for that two try trap. Right, that two try trap pattern. If the market just won't pull back here for you, and usually this will be just above the moving average. These patterns are very, very similar in the sense that uh, very consistent like this, where they oftentimes will pull back very shallow, give you a lower low, and then of course a trap high right above that high. We call it excuse me, we call this a two try trap pattern. So there are three setups I'm watching for here right now. One of them, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be that seller failure. I really want to get it off the trap, right off the high, that seller failure, okay, into, into a bullish pullback, right, for a move back up to retest the high of the range, right, and the high of that, of that, of, of the, of the move itself, right, that's a big, big target going higher here. Um, or, or we can look for that one, two, three, move down, mark the low, mark the high, right, and sell off that high. Or if we don't get the pullback, right, if it just kind of keeps running here without you, look for that shallow pullback, that trap high, who I call that two try trap pattern. Also keep in mind too, if it just runs back into the range and chops around here right now, what's the plan then? Right. If this thing is, if, you know, if we don't get that seller failure, you know, to buy into the stops up here, if they just run back into the range, what's the plan then? At that point now, it's a bull momentum. We're going to focus on buying low by using seller failures. Right. Wait for it to get below the range again. Look for those bears to come in to sell off the moving average. And we're simply buying right into their stop losses. Right, that's the goal. If it goes back up into that range, if it runs right through that 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 range, right, like what range, right? If it goes right to the top of that range here now, look for that two try trap. So if it really cooks going higher, and this is where personality of the market's big, right? If it really rips higher, you know, ignores the range top there and goes higher, find that two try trap pattern, right, and grab that trap as well. Now, don't forget tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, we're going to do all of this together in our trade room. The best way to get registered is an advanced member. I'll put all the links for registration for tomorrow's trade room in the description of this YouTube video. If you're not going to be with me tomorrow in the trade room, the next best thing is to grab our free trading classes. That free course button that popped up there in the upper right-hand corner, grab that free course. That will teach you all about my favorite entry patterns, my favorite trading strategies, and you'll see hundreds of examples of how we apply that strategy to our favorite futures markets. So if you're not with me tomorrow in the trade room, grab that free course that popped, that popped up in the upper right-hand corner. That way, at the very least, you can make the most of our time together on this video newsletter. All right, so now we're getting good here. Now we know how to kind of listen to the story the market's being told, right? The market's telling us. We also know that tomorrow, right, slower time frames, if the volatility continues, if we keep seeing high volatility, slower time frames, widen those stops and targets, and cut down that position size. And again, I'll show you how to do this tomorrow in the trade room. So make sure you come out and join us. Next up here, over on the S&P 500. Now the S&P has a lot of big clues here. This is where, again, you wanna go out and listen to what is the market telling you right now? Well, first of all, we know that we had that big gap down. And again, that doesn't really change much. You know, it doesn't really change much at all. You know, we have the same plan that is to execute the patterns, execute the plan, same day, every day, day in, day out, same thing. Now, sometimes the markets are more volatile, and when they are more volatile, we slow it down, right? Slower time frame, widen the stops, and cut those position sizes down. What do we know right now? We know the market is bearish, right? That is, that is for sure. There's no evidence right now that the buyers got anything going. 
every time the market tries to poke its head above the moving average, the bears are waiting there to ruin their afternoon. So we know the market is bearish. Now, what do we normally see when we see a strong move in one direction? We usually see a two-legged pullback and a retest of the extreme. Are you with me on this? Are you seeing this again now? Different direction here. All right, this is the S&P. We're bearish. So it's different, right? It's a different direction. Oil was bullish. It's the same stuff, though. Now, what's going to happen when the bears get down to retest these lows? They're going to have a test right down here, right? They're going to be tested. Do you want to go lower or do you reject these lows? Okay, this is, this is, this is the key right now to the S&P, right? It's not about direction right now. It's about location. Where am I on the S&P? We know we're bearish, but I am just about to retest that major low, and I want nothing to do with selling down here. Now, if you can give me a bounce off these lows, I'll bet I can catch some of these counter trend buyers trying to pick bottoms, you know, and, and, and buy the dip, as they say, right? As the kids say these days, right? Everybody's into the buying the dips right now, right? But the dips, ain't, the dips ain't getting bought. That's the problem, right? So hopefully we can catch some more people trying to buy the, the uh, you know, quote unquote, buy the dip here tomorrow, and we can sell into their stops as well. Right? That would be something to look for, but I don't want to sell into this low. I may also look for right the market to go through the low. And if they can go through that low, they got one more target waiting down there at 36 and three quarters. If it really turns into a bloodbath tomorrow, right, 2560 is my runaway zone. So I've got some levels I'm watching for as we go lower. Notice I haven't mentioned the gap at all. There's no need to worry about the gap. The percentage down, I don't care. It doesn't matter to us whatsoever, right? Oh, there's a gap? Good, wonderful. We can use that gap at some point if it becomes, a, if, 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 if the market reverses. But as of right now, though, we're definitely not worried about that gap. What I'm most worried about right now is, what do I know? I know we're bearish. I know we got the one, the two. I know bears were waiting up here. They did a great job at running it back down. Now we're sitting here at these lows. I, I can't sell down here. Right? There's not enough profit down here to make. There's not enough meat on the bone down here. I also know the sellers who got short up here and probably sold up here as well, they're taking their profit down here. And how do bears take profit? They buy. And so I don't want to be caught trying to be a seller down here, right? Not a great spot to be selling down here. So this is the big concern. We know we're bearish, but we are in a very uh, uncomfortable spot. We're too bearish to buy and we're too low to sell. So what is the trader supposed to do for this tomorrow? We've got to wait for the price either gets up off this low so I can try to anticipate counter trend bottom pickers, right? Getting a handful of you know what, or can they go lower, right? And prove and give me some proof of a one, two, three breakout. There are really three basic scenarios here. Do we go up, do we go down, or do we go sideways? You'll notice I've got two battle zones on this. So let's talk about that, right? What if the market pops higher here? As always, anytime I see a range, I like to look for these expanding triangles. That's a great level of resistance for me to use overhead. Now, if I can get the market running up here again, up inside that, right inside that uh, kind of first sell zone, if you will, right up around that trend line here, I can easily now look for a buyer failure and I can literally sell into those stop losses, right, of the buyers. Okay, it's literally that simple. You wait for it to go up, you wait for the buyers to commit, you know where the stops are, and you sell to the stops. And it usually produces a pullback right afterwards, a buyer failure into seller pullback. Now, the seller pullback may not be easy on right in the range here, but that's the idea, right? We go up, we run it, we run into resistance overhead, moving average comes over, the bulls try to buy it, we now know where their stops are, we're selling into stops. And then we usually get that pullback. Now, again, that pullback may not be in a very comfortable spot here. I don't like to trade inside the range, but you can kind of see where that lines up here, right? You can see kind of how that pattern works. Up, failure, pull back, and go, right? Selling stops, selling the pullback, selling the stops, selling the pullback. You can see an example of it. Now, again, the pullback pattern may not be very effective because it's inside the range. I just don't want to get in the habit of trading inside the range, but that failure, that seems pretty good. Now, at the same time, we may also see the market really jump, right? It may really jump. And I have this additional sell zone overhead. And if you're a client of mine, you know that this range is relatively wide 
And that wide range is what's causing me to use these two different cell zones, right? We'll talk more about that in our video classes, of course, right? But be aware, these are two, right? these are two cell zones uh, because of the width of this trading range. And you'll learn a lot more about this when you come out and join us as a, as a client in the trade room. We'll talk about this more detail. And obviously, our video classes, our, our video course, we'll go through the entire steps as well. Now, the, the, the second cell zone, though, if I get this thing way up, into that sell zone now, now what's gonna happen? It's gonna feel really bullish, isn't it? Now these will normally take either one of two patterns. One would be a two-legged pullback where you draw that trend line over, get underneath the trend line and use it as resistance. Okay, we don't see these patterns as often as I wish we did, uh, but they're really great when you get them. So if you do see that two-legged pullback, right, and you'll know it because it'll be one leg up, pull back, two legs up, right, and that second leg, now you can draw that trend line over and use that trend line as resistance. That is one pattern I'm always looking for whenever I have a really deep, deep pullback. Another pattern is a slight variation of that failure pattern. So if we really jump up here right now, you know, again, I'm not quite ready yet to call this a reversal. You know, I've got this hidden channel I'm drawing on. So I like this whole area up here. However, if it really pokes its head going higher here, I'm going to be a little bit more concerned though now because momentum has shifted, right? It's not a full-blown reversal yet. We'll talk about that in a moment, right? But if I can get a good pop higher here, you know, again, bears get rejected down here. I think, I think the best strategy at that point now is going to be give those buyers the benefit of the doubt make them try once, make them try twice, and then we know where their stops are and we can sell into those stops. Now, a lot of times, those what I call nested failures, they end up turning into a two-try trap pattern on the other side. So keep your eyes open for that. If you're not with me tomorrow, we'll do it together in the trade room, obviously. But if you're, if you're on your own tomorrow, uh, that will be a combination setup I would definitely be keeping my eyes on here for tomorrow, right? We run up. Again, momentum is strong now. Buyers try once, buyers try twice. And again, I'm letting them try twice because of that momentum buildup, right? They're, they're much higher odds. A lot more ammunition will go into trying to hold that pullback if we see a real strong push up. Then I'll look for that buyer failure and again into like a pullback. But again, this is going to be usually after a nested failure. We see those two try trap patterns right before we go back down into that trading range. Now, again, how would this thing turn uh, bullish now, right? What would a bull market look like? Well, it starts off with a strong move up. Then it pulls back to the moving average. And then we see a strong jump off the moving average, right? Now, what we call that again? A one, two, three reversal, right? If the buyers could have held that, right? if, they, if they could have held that, this would have been a completely different story, right? This would have been a different headline at right, the closing bell today. So they couldn't hold the pullback back there. They fail and it collapses back down. If they hold that pullback though, now we do is we mark up that high. I mark up that major low, okay? Not off the medium low, off the major low. And I simply wait for the chance to buy off the low of that channel. Okay, now sometimes we don't get the pullback. You know, sometimes we get the one, two, three, but we don't get the pullback. Sometimes the market goes up, it holds the pullback, right? And this thing just launches. And when it launches, look for that two try trap. Now you'll know this when you see it, right? You'll know it when you see it. If you don't know it, right? If you don't know what you're looking for, right? That's gonna be a clue. You need more experience or you need to shorten the learning curve by doing it with me. Right, I'll show you in real time as this stuff is setting up in our trade room. Right, it's much easier that way than trying to you know, talk about it in hindsight. So the bottom line is, if we get that strong punch off the moving average, just keep your eyes open for that two try trap. These will oftentimes line up with right the low of that hidden channel. So we're we'll keeping an eye out for you know a pullback, a two try trap, all kinds of entry patterns off of that right off the low of that channel. Again, though, make no mistake about it, I am not advocating for predicting that reversal. After the market reverses, then I can buy the pullback from there. I'm not in the business of making predictions. Now, don't forget if the market sits and goes sideways here, right? If we sit here and go sideways for a while, what changes? Nothing. 
Nothing changes. We are still a range. So if we sit here going sideways, right, nothing changes. We go up. Buyers fail. We sell back down. If we really punch, right, nested and then back down, right, if they hold it, it it's, a, it's, a, it's a reversal. We buy, right, same plan, same plan. So don't, right, don't, don't forget about the strategy if it doesn't set up right away, right? If this sits here for a while and sits for a while, don't forget about what we're talking about right now if we get that break higher, right, tomorrow morning. Now, what if it goes lower? Can I buy this thing as it goes lower? You can. You can buy it, but you want to buy it with a crown reversal. Crown reversal patterns are kind of like a nested failure that's a little bit more conservative, right? A little bit juiced up, if you will. Uh, you'll notice here, I, I take a little bit more precaution on this. A crown reversal is a very specific pattern. Notice how I draw this. First of all, we got to get through those lows. Then we see, right, the bears try once. That does not retest the low. It goes to a higher high. The bears try twice, and we trap low below that low. Now, that's a very specific pattern because it has to be. It has to be very, well, we have to protect ourselves two ways. One, we have to let the bears kind of dig their own graves, so to speak. We have to make sure the bears are fully invested because we're going to need those stop losses, which get triggered up here. We're going to need those stops to fuel this puppy going back into the range. Remember, we're going against the trend. We're going against the trend and we're going against that, you know, that big momentum move yesterday too, today, right? So we need those stops. We need the bears when they get stopped out. We need them to be fully committed. Right? I don't want any more ammunition left in the chamber. Right, I want them to be empty, and I want them to get run over. Right, That's what you need for the two tries. The trap down here, this is to get me in where I know I can get a little bit of easy money. Right, That's the thing. I need to be able to structure my stop. If I wait and I buy it way up here, my stop has to go way down below the low. Right? Think about that for a second. If I wait and I buy way up here, once I know the market reversed, now what's my risk? Well, I mean, you could put a, you just, just an arbitrary stop on here, but not if you're smart. Your stop really has to go down below those lows, right? At that point now, where's your reward? Now your risk is right here. And look, it's, you, can't, you can't do it. You, there's no risk reward up there. You can't tell me we know the market's going all the way back to these highs. You're dreaming, right? That's a fantasy. I'd love to think that's going to be the case, but all we know right now is the top of that range, right, is what's most likely. And the risk-reward ratio on this doesn't work, right? That strategy, you might make money once or twice, but any loss, any loss, and when you go and counter trend, there'll be a lot more losses than winners. Any loss will take back all that profit. This is why the crown reversal is so important. It's so important we buy low. Because now, you know, keep in mind, you know, crown reversals are probably 45, 50% winning ratio, right, on a good day. Uh, they're reversal patterns, for crying out loud. You're not going to get 80% out of these. So you've got to be willing to risk small, right? You've got to go risk small to earn large. And that's why that trap low is so important. At the very least, a double bottom down there, right? Double bottom off the number one, right? Then back up into that range. Okay, that's my reversal. That's the one I would trust the most. That's the one I feel safe enough giving, you know, without knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. We'll look for more like boxed in and one, two, threes tomorrow, right? We know what's going on in real time. Now, how do we break out going lower, right? One, two, three, break down. Got to hold that pullback and run. Then I can move the right, grab the low, grab that big high. Okay, not the medium high, the big high, and short that sucker right off that right off that high. Target down to the measured move. Or we make a run, right? We really tank, right? We're running, we're running. Don't sell it. Structure your trade first. Shallow pullback, lower low, trap high, two try trap. Does that make sense? Right? Lower low in price, shallow pullback, trap, hit it. Okay, those are two of my favorite entry patterns as we break down. Also, too, don't be afraid, too, as we go lower, if it starts going sideways down here again, that's a range. What do we do with a bear market in a range? We sell above the highs. How do we do that? Buyer failure above the moving average, short it back down, right? Selling into those stops as we go, all right? Lot we covered here on this S&P, but it's actually pretty simple. We're too low to sell right now. 
I want to see their pop up so I can sell into it. I can buy down here, but I've got to be careful. Very specific entry pattern necessary to be able to get a reliable sh uh, long off of those lows. And again, tomorrow morning, right? Tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, I'll put all the registration information in the description of this YouTube video. Grab that link, get registered either for the free course, right, or as a member, and you can come out and join me tomorrow morning and every morning in our trade room, right, at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And again, grab that free trading course I've linked up in the upper right hand corner last but not least here over on the gold right now let's grab some some GC some yellow metal now boy we've covered a lot here so far in the first 45 minutes of this video I really appreciate you sticking around and watching the end I know all of this isn't easy to learn right now but if you're still here with me right now hit that thumbs up button right drop me a comment in the comment section below let me know you're still here right if you're part of the 1% group let me know you're still here only 1% of people are gonna watch this far into the video right serious people people are watch this far into the video you are the people I want to be working with you are watching I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this video every night. So thank you so much for being here, even after a daylight savings time shift. I know we're all kind of zombies right now, right, underslept here over the weekend. So thank you so much for sticking with the video here. Over on the goal, what do we know right now? We know we have overall bullish momentum. And as I mentioned earlier, it's not just technical, it's also fundamental. People have this assumption that gold is bullish right now because of what's happening in the world we live in. It's very rare, it's very rare that you hear the average person, you know, imagine, imagine if the last six months when, 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 imagine if somebody asked me, so Joe, do you think the equity markets will keep, will keep going higher because the Fed will keep putting more money in, you know, kind of the, the, the synthetic, you know, Fed, Fed put? Nobody ever asked me that, right? Nobody ever stops me in the street and says, oh, you're a trader? So do you think the do you think the E-mini will keep going higher because the Fed will keep putting money? No, they, they don't, people don't talk about those those fundamental impact of the markets. But everyone's talking about gold right now. Everyone's talking about gold. That's what I mean by the fundamental difference. It's very rare that we hear right people on the street talking about gold. You know, again, the average person. So what do you think? Is gold going to go back to a million again? Right? Everyone knows that. That is a big part of this, I think, on gold. And you really got to be careful shorting this market right now because, you know, whether it be, you know, you know your, your average Joe on the street, right, or whether it be a professional trader right now, the technicals say bullish, the fundamentals say bullish. You know, nobody was ever asking me, you know, uh, about about uh, the fundamentals of the S&P, right? They didn't care. They're asking about the fundamentals on the gold. I see that as being a very big, important piece of this puzzle. So be very careful selling gold, right, until we see clear signals right now. We also can see, right, a big bear move down. That's a very big part of this, right, of this analysis. Uh, what does a big bear move down tell me? A big bear move down tells me there's a pretty good chance they're gonna try to run this thing lower and get that right and get that retest of the low, right? They got their they get their strong move down. They got their one leg, right? They're trying for two legs, trying to get this thing back down to retest these lows. This is the same thing we've talked about on the oil. It was bullish on the S and P, right? It was it was bearish. So we know that I would call that the big elephant in the room right now. Right, I call that the big elephant in the room. Right, those bears, they're gonna wanna be selling up here, trying to pick those tops, we're gonna back down to retest that low. Okay, what else do we know right now? We know there's a range. Okay, now this range is a little bit tough to find at first. You can see it's a range on there, but I've got this range whittled down. Anytime I see a range, I always know expanding triangles are very important, right? That's gonna give me a level of support underneath. That gives me a level of resistance right up overhead so we're looking really good here on this chart we know we are fundamentally and technically very bullish right now okay as i mentioned earlier even the average person knows that gold should be going higher right now because of the fear in these markets we also know the long-term technical trend right is bullish as well uh, we also can see here that strong move down right so we're expecting to see another leg lower and then i should be looking for a buy down here we also know we've got that that range ranges tell me to buy low they tell me to sell high and they tell me to avoid the middle all right, so what's the plan on this? Okay, we know we've got some momentum that's bearish right now, right? But again, we should see buyers coming in underneath. Let's play that game. What if price goes up, goes down, right, and goes sideways? First of all, right, let's play the downside here. As we go lower, 
Again, fundamentally bullish, long-term bullish right now, right? Technical bullish at this point now. It really all depends on what type of move we get. If I get a relatively small move lower, just below that low, for example, this becomes a very easy seller failure, right? Seller failure, and you're literally buying right into those stop losses, going back up into that range. Just make sure you're not buying inside the range, right? Since what happens is you'll get this runs down, pulls back, goes like this. You don't want to buy inside the range. What you'll do in that situation is, if we know that stops are right there, you wait for stops to get triggered, put your limit to buy right below the range, and wait for it to come back to get you in. Okay, that's the trick when we right, when we want to get in, but we don't want to get inside the range, right? It's called, it's called a limit in technique underneath the low of that trading range. Now, if we really collapse down, then now what happens? Momentum becomes a factor, and now we look for what? Now we look for that nested, right? Remember that? Remember before? It's a good way to absorb the market's momentum. Remember, these nesteds, when they fail, they oftentimes rip higher with those two try traps, right? Remember that before as well, right? Two try traps. So think about that, right? Think about that. Whether or not we get a shallow pullback or a deep pullback, that will determine whether or not it's a seller failure or if it's a nested seller failure, which is this one right here, right? Absorbing that momentum and then back up right into that, right into that trading range. You can see, for example, right, when we see a real strong move, the bears are not going to give up without a fight, right? They'll try once, they'll try twice, right? Same idea. Strong, strong move down. You got to let those bears try once, try twice. Then we can look, right, to be a buyer into those stop losses. Now, don't forget, if we go sideways here, it doesn't really change very much. We look for that seller failure. We look for the nested failure, okay? Now, as we go lower, how does this market turn bearish? Right? I've already warned us, hopefully, I, hopefully I've warned you enough not to try picking tops in this market, right? But mostly though, if we see a strong move down, if we can get this right pull back to the moving average and a strong jump off the moving average now, that's called a one, two, three breakout. I can mark the low, mark the high, I can sell the high, right? Of that, again, a one, two, three breakout. I can sell the high, right, of that hidden channel. Again, sometimes we don't get the pullback. Right? Sometimes we get the, the jump off it, it runs, it shallow pullback to try trap off the high. If it really runs and doesn't pull back for you, mark up that low, mark up that high, we almost always get that little two try trap there, right, as we're going lower. So two try, right, two try trap or one, two, three reversal. Where are my bears trying to go right now? My bears, yeah, 1600 would be a pretty easy big round number. I would assume if these bears, if they can get their hands on this and hold on to it, that 1600 should be a, a pretty easy milestone for them considering, right, how frothy it is up here. Now, what if we go higher here? Okay, going higher is going to be the tough part because obviously it's a range and being above the range, I want to sell above the range here. But if we go higher here right now, remember the market is overall bullish. So if we go higher, how do I sell this market? I'm going to have to use that nested, right? No matter what, no matter how strong the move is. Well, I shouldn't say that. If the move is really strong back to the highs, we're no longer trying to be a, a seller anymore, right? But if we can get up around this trend line overhead, if I can get up in this trend line here overhead, get a buyer's trying once, buyer's trying twice, then I feel a lot more comfortable being a seller back down into that trading range. But as far as being a as far as being a seller, right, into a just a straight up buyer failure, I think you're asking for a two try trap to get trapped out on the way right up to retest that high. In fact, if this if we see a nice strong jump higher, and if I can get a two try trap before we get to that high of day. That'll be the that be the caveat, right? They've got to get you. You got to get into this thing before that high of day, right? Now, if they get back to the high of day, keep an eye out for a range up here, which is very common. Okay, look to buy underneath the range using what? Using a seller failure pattern, right? Buy underneath the range using that seller failure. Okay, again, this is all prerequisite. Right, the one, the one kind of uh, pre-qualification here is you've got to get that range up there. If you don't see the range, you can't buy underneath it, right? Then of course, if it just rips up to that next measured move here, right? That's my next measured leg up there, right? If it really rips higher here and runs, again, I've got my 
potential for a one, two, three. You know, as long as it doesn't bounce off that high. As long as we don't get trapped at that high there, I can easily grab that hidden channel, right? Buy off the low of that hidden channel. Again, you'd want to be cleared above the high, but not to that measured move. This might be a bit tricky up here, right? It might be one of those scenarios where you've got to kind of wait to get up here, then look for that, that, that two try trap, right? It might not be easy to get a one, two, three, you know what I mean? A one, two, three breakout just may not fit very well here because if I get to that measured move, I don't want to buy that pullback. Right. If I get to that measured move, I don't want to buy it anymore. If I get to that measured move, when we get to the measured move, we almost always see a much deeper pullback because profit taking. And that deeper pullback will turn into a seller failure before a retest that high. So as you can see, how the market goes back up to retest these highs here will be a very big part of this. I would love to get a strong move up, though, a two-try trap before we get back up to retest the high. Right, how the market sets up above there is going to be a little bit of a thread in the needle, and of course, we'll do more of that right together tomorrow in our trade room. And again, speaking of trade room, tomorrow morning, every morning, eight o'clock Eastern time, we're going to come out and do this together like we do every morning. So make sure you get registered. Time is ticking. Tomorrow morning will be before you know it. The easiest way to get registered and join me tomorrow morning and every morning in the trade room is to grab the registration link in the description of this YouTube video. I'll put all all the links in the description if you're on the blog right now at sideways markets i'll put a big blue button for you right below the video tonight on the trading blog get registered for tomorrow morning's trading session and as always don't be afraid to call me if you have any questions this evening i'll be more than happy take some time out of my day walk you through how to get registered right use live support on the right hand side as well and as always guys if membership isn't quite right for you don't forget to join our free trading classes as part of our free trial again all the links in the description of this youtube video and keep in touch don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed tonight's video and type those questions in. I look forward to answering other questions once we publish the video this afternoon. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Now get some rest, will ya? I feel like I'm walking around in a fog right now. You know, I missed an hour of sleep last night. I had a really busy weekend. Went to a, a big fundraiser, a big kids' charity fundraiser this weekend. Had an amazing time, but I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm definitely feeling like a bit of a zombie here myself here tonight. So I'm going to get to bed early tonight. I will see you tomorrow, bright and early. If not tomorrow morning, come back and see me again next time on the next edition of our nightly newsletter. As always, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.